Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah and good morning, folks. Welcome to our Easter Sunday worship online. It is a joy and a privilege to be with you all this Easter Sunday, and we hope that wherever you are gathered, you are prepared to experience the power of God with what we have prepared for you. Because, friends, whether you are gathered together with hundreds of other people in our sanctuary or you are gathered around your kitchen table at home, the presence of God is there. And that risen presence of Christ, that presence of Christ that gives us reason to shout hallelujah, to be excited, to put a smile on our faces wherever we are gathered, that same spirit of resurrection is alive and well today. So welcome, friends. It is wonderful to have you all. And we just hope and pray that wherever you are gathered, the Holy Spirit will be there with you during this time of worship, that you would experience the resurrection power of God today. Happy Easter. Let's get to worship.
the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. continue into this time of worship we come together in this morning's call to worship and uh, on my on the screen to what will be your right is my left you're going to see what I'm going to be reading and then just over here on what is going to be your left my right uh, you're going to be seeing what you will be reading the response so to speak so let's uh, join together in this litany of thanksgiving you, Creator God, are so good. At all times, in all places, let all of creation sing praises to your holy name. You, O oh God, continually bless us with a love that endures forever. Though we find ourselves separated, uncertain, and distressed about the future, we know you are our God the one who remains steadfast with us. And so we sing, You, O oh God, continually bless us with a love that endures forever. Your healing spirit makes us whole. In your presence, our brokenness is transformed. Our fears you soothe. You, O oh God, Continually bless us with a love that endures forever. 
even as we question the world around us. We see your spirit move and breathe life into our lives. We rejoice in you, and we are glad. You, O oh God, continually bless us with a love that endures forever. You go before us, and you follow close behind us. You are present in places where our congregation gathers, in our homes and in our hearts. Your Spirit fills us with songs of thanksgiving. And you place upon our lips sweet hallelujahs to your name. You, O oh God, continually bless us with a love that endures forever. To you we give praise, to the one who creates order from chaos, who inspires all good things and guides us as a loving parent guides their children. We celebrate and glorify your name. You, O oh God, continually bless us with a love that endures forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more? Than just a sum of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Who are you? Say I am loved when I can't. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say. I believe the only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. Who
Friends, let's enter into a time of prayer. Gracious and almighty God, on this Easter day, marked by both sorrow and joy, our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need include both heartfelt lament and fervent praise. O oh God, we lament that we cannot gather today for public worship that death stalks the world, and that our sorrows and fears blunt our songs of hallelujah. And yet, O oh God, around the globe we praise you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, for our, our baptismal washing in his life, for your presence come to us in the world, and for the hope the gospel brings. O oh Lord, we praise you for our world, for the gifts of nature, for springtime flowers and budding trees, for the soil and the rain that nourish the crops. And Lord, we lament that war and violence still rage, that, that countless people suffer injustice. Lord, we praise you that some of our leaders are leading us in the ways that lead us to you, devoting themselves to save the people. And so we pray, Lord, for our connection together, not only as United Methodists, but as friends and family, through the gift of technology. So, Lord, we pray for all of those who are suffering especially this day of the coronavirus. And we pause, Lord, and remember them and name them before you in our hearts. And, O oh God, we give you praise for the many medical personnel who are working so hard, who are giving their life away for the sake of your people. Bless them, Lord, and their families for their generosity of time and gifts and life. Gracious Lord, on this Easter, help us to remember that you have come to us in the gift of Jesus Christ. So we celebrate that gift this day, and we praise you and we glorify your holy name. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are the source of life, the word of salvation, and the power of mercy. So it is into your hands that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your compassionate might for the sake of him who lived, died, and rose for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. It is... In his powerful and precious name, we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we raise you up today. We praise you, Lord, because you are the way. You are the truth. You are the light, Lord Jesus. And we know that with you, you can make a way when there is no other way. You can roll the stone away, Lord God. 
God, if you can raise the dead to life, you can work in our lives. We praise your name.
Hear this reading of scripture from the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered. They remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in, in your precious and holy sight. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, this is certainly a different Easter. It is an Easter that I have not experienced before in my lifetime. We're all in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, learning new things. Uh, I'm learning more about videos and producing worship videos than I ever have in, ever known in the past. And a lot of people are doing new things and discovering new things during this time. Uh, just this morning, discovered something new. Do you know that there is a toilet paper calculator online where you can go and plug in the number of people in your household and how long, like for a month, and it will spit out uh, how much, how many rolls of two-ply toilet paper that you need to have on hand. For example, I did the family for, for Kay and myself, and for two people for a month, it says that we need 13 rolls of two-ply toilet paper. For a family of six, it said we need an average of 38 rolls. That seems like a lot to me, but this is something new that I never thought I'd be figuring out uh, on, with a toilet paper calculator how much toilet paper I really needed uh, to, to last a certain amount of time. New stuff. Uh, this is new today on this Easter Sunday where we have gathered here online, but this is normally the highest attended Sunday morning worship service of the year. And yet, I want you to take a look at our sanctuary this morning. Robert, show us who is in our sanctuary this morning besides yourself and me. Wow, I've never experienced an Easter like this before. Empty. That's our sanctuary. Empty of brothers and sisters in Christ. And as I look out upon this empty sanctuary this morning, 
I'm reminded that one of the main themes of Easter is emptiness. I mean, think about it. Emptiness. It, it surrounds the Easter story. You know, I've always liked the, the story about the funeral director and his assistant who had to take a body off about 200 miles for burial. And so they, they went in a hearse, you know, and after the service was over, uh, it had been a hard uh, couple of weeks for the funeral director. And so he said, I'm really tired, and so I'm just going to crawl back into the back of the hearse and stretch out and take a nap while you drive us home. And so that's what they did. Uh, well, coming back home, uh, they had to stop and get some gas. And so you can imagine as soon as the hearse stopped at this gas station, uh, the movement stopped, uh, the funeral director woke up from his nap. And so he sets up in the back of the hearse, pulls open the curtain, and there's a guy getting gas or starting to get gas right next to him. And as soon as that guy looks over there and sees the funeral director set up uh, in the back of the hearse, he immediately you know, loses all the color in his face. He throws up uh, the gas nozzle, he jumps in his car and takes off. I mean, he was startled, didn't know what to make of that. Didn't know what to make of that. That was the experience of the women who came to the tomb on that first Easter morning. They got there, and what did they discover? Emptiness. There was no dead body in the tomb. And Scripture says they did not know what to make of that. And then, you know, you have these, these angels that show up uh, dressed in dazzling white clothes, and they... Asked the women, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And we're told that they were frightened, startled. Well, of course they were. Any of us would be. But what they discovered was emptiness. Emptiness. The empty cave, however, was not the only empty part of Jesus' life. There's also an empty crib and an empty cross. That's all part of the Easter story. I want you to uh, do a little exercise with me this morning. And you can do this. You won't look foolish because you're at home. Uh, so nobody's going to see you do this except your family. So I want you to take both your hands and I want you to reach out and I want you to grab hold of the secret of Easter. Go ahead and do that. Take your hands, reach out, and grab hold like that. Okay. Everybody do that? Now, bring your hands back in and open them up and look into them. What do you see? Emptiness. That's what's in your hands. Emptiness is the secret of Easter. The empty crib, the empty cross, the empty cave. Well, the crib is empty because God has come into the world as a little child, as a baby, and yet did not stay small, did not stay a baby. Jesus was the hope of the world, but for that hope to reach the entire world, uh, that baby had to grow and to mature into a person that could challenge the world with hope and faith. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus grew and matured into a person who had nothing, who was living on borrowed time, and yet had everything. Think about it. Have you ever thought about the life of Jesus? I mean, Jesus was born in a borrowed stable. His first crib was a borrowed manger. Uh, he fed the 5,000 by borrowing a lunch from a little boy. Uh, he preached from a borrowed boat to the multitudes. When he went into the city of Jerusalem, you know, on that Palm Sunday, remember how he went? On the back of a borrowed donkey. Even when he had his last supper with his disciples, you remember where they had that? In a borrowed upper room and then finally remember where jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb 
of Joseph of Arimathea. Jesus didn't have anything. Well, maybe except this one thing. Jesus had nothing except the cross. Because in a way, the cross was his and his alone. The cross was thrust upon others. But Jesus willingly took upon himself the cross. Jesus willingly took the weight and the pain and the suffering of our sin and the pain and the suffering of our separation from God. He took that all on himself on the cross so that we would not have to bear it ourselves. Jesus' cross, that instrument of pain and suffering, became for us a symbol of hope, of redemption, and forgiveness. You know, it's like Jesus said in John uh, chapter 12, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. See, the, the cross is empty because Jesus, as, as the final sacrifice, is like that, that grain of wheat that needed to be buried, needed to be planted in the ground for hope to sprout and to grow and to produce much fruit. But that cave that became Jesus' tomb couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep Jesus down. You know, and that's why the women, when they got there on that first Easter morning, what did they discover? Emptiness. Emptiness. See, I think the stone was rolled away, not so that Jesus could get out, but so that we could look in and discover and feel the wonder of the empty cave, the empty tomb. The tomb was empty because the seed of hope, Jesus Christ, bore the fruit that God had designed and planned. Jesus conquered death, and he offers us resurrection and eternal life with him. Oh, the crib, and the cross, and the cave, they're all empty. So that the promises of God in Jesus would be fulfilled and fill us with faith, hope, and new life. And so on this day, what does the emptiness of Easter mean for us? I think it means that we can now live lives that are empty. Lives that are empty, that are empty of worry, Lives that are empty of anxiety. Lives that are empty of fear. Lives that are, that are free from a bleak view of the future. See, that emptiness that is a part of our life because of Easter's emptiness, then now that emptiness can be filled. That emptiness can be filled with joy. In Christ, that emptiness can be filled with hope in Christ, that emptiness can be filled with the love of God, that emptiness can be filled with the peace of God in our hearts, that emptiness in our lives can be filled now with the assurance of an eternal life with God. And so, in today's COVID 19 environment in which we live, my, my prayer and, and hope for you this day is that you would experience the emptiness of Easter and that you then would live today and tomorrow and next week and next month and next year and your entire life, that, that you would live lives that are empty of worry, of anxiety, and of fear. For we should all remember the words, the words of the psalmist in Psalm 
46. Listen now to verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when its waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. The Lord of heavenly hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. My brothers and sisters, as you go to be the people of God and live out your faith each day, we live out the resurrection faith. We live out God's grace for us in the Easter event in Jesus Christ. And so, my friends, as you go forth this day, I pray that you would experience in your life Easter's emptiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
And so, sisters and brothers, on this Easter Sunday, remember that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the blessing of the risen Christ be with you, remain with you, now and forevermore. Amen.